Dartmoor National Park is famous for its wild open landscapes and granite tours. You might think it's a natural, unspoilt place, but take a closer look and you'll see it has been shaped by incredible natural forces and the people who've lived there for thousands of years. Don't take my word for it. Let's rewind 280 million years and take a look. This was a time of immense activity. The Earth's crust twisted and folded, causing rocks to melt deep underground. Dartmoor's granite was formed in the intense heat. Tin, copper, iron and other minerals ran into its cracks. The granite pushed up, lifting the land above to form a vast mountain range. Then, over millions of years, it was worn away by wind, desert sun, rain, oceans, and ice to form the spectacular granite tours of Dartmoor. Many years later, the first hunter-gatherers made clearings and pursued the moor's wild animals for food and clothing. Some were better than others. About 4,000 years ago, our Bronze Age ancestors cleared the high ground where they built farms and divided the land with stone boundaries. They used Dartmoor's tough granite to honor the dead, building amazing stone ceremonial rows and circles. They discovered the tin ore washed from the rock into Dartmoor's streams, and they used it to make jewelry and bronze tools. But gradually, the climate became colder and wetter. And wetter. <sighs> That's more like it. This made the soil less fertile, so farmers deserted the higher ground. Times were tough, food was scarce. So they built hill forts on the moor's edges to defend themselves from rivals. And when the Romans swept through Britain, they took one look at the people of Dartmoor and steered clear. Then there were more invaders. First, the Saxons. They made homes in the lower lands. The Vikings attacked too, but they were bought off with Lidford pennies. Then, William the Conqueror sailed over from Normandy and, well, conquered Britain in 1066. And things got better for everyone, except King Harold. The climate improved. It stopped raining a bit. Harvests were good and the population boomed. But all these people needed more land to live and farm on. So they turned to Dartmoor's higher moorlands and divided them into fields, sometimes using the old Bronze Age boundaries. They built longhouses where they lived with their cattle. Farmers from across Devon brought cattle onto the moor for summer grazing. There were so many, it was nicknamed the Red Tide. The search for tin and other metals continued. They built water-powered mills called blowing houses where tin ore was crushed and smelted. In 1337, King Edward gave the Black Prince Dartmoor Forest as a present to use as a hunting ground. He wouldn't share it with anyone. Well, that's not nice, is it, Your Highness? Then came the Black Death, a devastating plague that killed thousands across the country and across the moor. On top of that, the weather changed and harvests failed. Those who survived left the High Moorland to search for better land. But slowly, life picked up. Dartmoor was home to lots of sheep. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. As time passed, the woolen industry flourished and people found new ways to dig and mine in search of tin. Dartmoor's occasional visitors came and went quickly. They saw it as an unpleasant, barren land. But this changed when Victorian artists showcased its stunning landscapes in dramatic paintings, and writers used it as a backdrop for their wild tales. Tourists flocked to see it for themselves using the new railways. Victorian industrialists and landowners used science and engineering to improve the land, reopen the old mines, and create quarries in search of Dartmoor's treasure. With this interest in making profit, they sadly started to close off the common land to ordinary folk. Antiquarians, early archaeologists, started searching for Bronze Age remains and tried restoring stone rows, though they didn't always do such a good job of it. 
However, they were the first people who realized what could be lost if the moor wasn't cared for properly and championed its conservation. Human hands have slowly shaped Dartmoor's habitats for thousands of years, and wildlife has thrived. You can see this in the hay meadows around Postbridge, or the beautiful wooded river valleys and the birds of the open moor. Today, it's a national park, protected for us all to enjoy, a place where you can see traces of the past written in the landscape alongside amazing wildlife. So that's the Dartmoor story so far. The next chapter needs writing, and what we do affects the story. So let's work together to look after Dartmoor for wildlife and for future generations to enjoy.